What I want to talk about tonight is a little bit different. Uh, I'd like us to think a little bit out of the box. What if we thought about logistics, this ugly gray thing that we deal with here at the university? What if we thought about it like the internet? And we thought of the physical internet, where logistics is part of this whole process. A little bit different. But why not? I mean, we're all sitting in front of screens every day, right? All of you got your glass in there and you're playing around with your computers or your uh, smartphones. So why can't we think of logistics in the same manner? That it's something that sits behind the glass. When we take a look at uh, supply chains today, are they very efficient? How many of you are taking any of the classes on uh, transport design and some of those nice things that uh, we try to shovel down your throat as, uh, as good things to know? Well, they're not very efficient. In fact, if we take a look at uh, the fill rate of most trucks on the highway, it's less than 50%. And when we look at the idling time and the actual productivity of a truck, it's somewhere around 25 to 33 percent. Now, most of you love sitting in traffic jams, right? You just sit there and go, I want this. I love it. Now, now I, I really won't say anything to you about this, but how many of you have a car? Any of you? You got cars? Okay, cars, cars, very good. Uh, <laughs> can I ask you what your car is doing right now? It's, it's sitting downstairs. It's sitting in the parking lot. Um, it's not sitting on the highway taking you anywhere. And so your car is also an asset that gets into all of these traffic jams. You know, an average car is carrying your rear end around less than 5% of its useful life. The rest of the time, it's just sitting there. Now, that's a pretty poor way to spend your money, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, trucks do the same thing, but they're a little more productive because the people who own those trucks want to make money using them. So, but they're only productive to 25 to 33 percent of the time. And that's a pretty low rate. So what happens if we think of it as the internet? So trucks are moving around just like uh, Uber. They're moving around on demand, getting filled up because, oh, I'm empty. Look at me. Uh, put something in me. We wouldn't have to have all of those trucks on the highway. We could get rid of half the trucks that are out there. And the same thing goes for ships. Why does everybody, why does Maersk have all of these ships? Why does Hapak Lloyd have all of these ships? They only run them partially full most of the time. We don't need all of these ships either. We could do much better if we thought of the internet when we think about logistics. In looking at the internet as logistics, we can break it down just like uh, the physical internet, break it down just like the regular internet is broken down into different layers. So where you could have a logistics web where everybody is moving the freight. We could have a supply web where vehicles and things are supplied onto that web. We could have a distribution web where we go to warehouses that take away the material and then finally distribute it on last mile delivery. We could have a realization web where we actually make product. So why should we even think about factories as anything other than just nodes on our logistics network? And we can have a mobility web where we're moving people. Why can't we put all of that together? We can think about these things. The inevitability of all of this is that 
somehow we're going to get something like this. But for all of you Germans here, we might, if we look out and let the web grow by itself, the physical internet grow by itself, we might end up with our little friendly uh, pig that uh, also has uh, wool on it so we can weave our own clothes, that we can milk, and that lays eggs. Not a very attractive animal, <laughs> <laughs> but pretty functional. So why don't we try to design something maybe a little prettier than this? It requires some thinking. But the physical internet is inevitable. It's inevitable because of what's going on right now in technology. When we take a look at uh, this wonderful technology, we need standards. We need the global standard for an OSI burger. Something so that all of the networks of the world can work together. Uh, this was an amazing thing that happened with the internet. And it happened by default, because no one really thought about things. A bunch of geeks got together like me, and the internet uh, technical committee began designing everything for the internet. And universities started to use it, and it went around the world. We used email back in the early 1980s. It was our first uh, excitement to be able to do list serves and email. And then uh, some guy down at CERN figured out how to do the wonderful World Wide Web, and then the rest is history, if you will. All of you now use the internet. We all use the internet. Well, we could do the same thing if we came up with standards for all of these wonderful little things that are tied together. But, you know, we need to cooperate. We need to work together. If you're going to share assets like you do on the internet, then truck drivers, companies that own ships or airplanes, all of them have to cooperate. They have to work together. So cooperation, if you will, would be out there. That wonderful word that we hear. But we would have fun moving those trucks around just like uh, little mail messages on the internet. That'd be sort of fun. To do that, we need organizational behavior to change. Niels' classes. You guys need to know how to work together. You need to know how to negotiate with one another very well. You need to know the psychology of everybody so that they can just be friends. <laughs> and in the end, we'll all sing Kumbaya walking into the sunset. <laughs> but the internet is a great metaphor for thinking about how can we improve and more efficiently operate logistics. Because logistics is still going to grow into the future. It's a trend that we can't get away from because all of you want to buy things. And you want to buy things at the lowest cost. And that means that we're always going to be moving freight. We're going to be moving it from areas where production costs are lower to areas where production value is higher. And so we'll see that continue. And what we want to do is get away from having to park our cars not only in the garage downstairs, but on the highway as well. And we want to get away from adding additional square meters of concrete. Because we don't need more square meters of concrete. What we need is more efficient operations. So what we need in doing this is to think about how do we switch things in a modular fashion? How can we build standardized containers so that we don't have to worry about uh, moving into smaller and smaller vehicles? So today we have the sea freight container. Can't we have similar containers that go into the sea freight container? so that when we build a sea freight container, we can get bigger and bigger and bigger. 
And then when we go and unload it, we're unloading modularity and decomposing modular boxes. So maybe we could do something like this. There's a project right now that the European Union is working on called Moduluska, which is focused specifically on this type of a uh, operation. When we want to look at what we're going to do uh, for the physical internet, it's enabled by the internet of things. So we want intelligent boxes out there, if you will, so that we can track them, so that we can see where our stuff is. But we also want to manage this, and we have to manage it in an efficient fashion if what we're doing is thinking about a self-managed network, which is what the internet is, and we would like to see that in the physical internet. Now, all of you are thinking this is rocket science. Well, it's not rocket science, but it is something that um, is important. Uh, it is something that is now being worked on. In fact, I head up a European Commission uh, technology platform called ALICE that is focused on nothing but the physical internet and how we can bring the physical internet into reality here in the European Union. But the physical internet is bigger than the European Union, so we have counterparts in China who are working on it, and we have counterparts in the United States who are working on this as well, so that we can go across borders, so that we can link things together in a networked type manner, in as efficient a manner as possible. So what we want to do is go where no one has gone before. Uh, we are out there trying to create uh, a physical internet here on this world. And hopefully we could do something like our friends uh, on Star Trek and create an intergalactic physical internet to move things between planets. But our idea here is to leverage the, the metaphor of the internet to be far more efficient in what we're doing and uh, allow those self-driving vehicles to uh, operate just like packets of messages do on the internet today. Self-organized, self-moving, ensuring that they get from one point to another at a level of service that you want and at a cost that is not prohibitive. So think about it. Think about where you could go in the future if you simply had a physical internet. Thank you. First of all, thank you. That was really great. Um, so we have a question because this is a rather radical change for yes. any business. So I guess it just goes along to <laughs> Why would the current logistics um, operators want to adopt this physical internet? Well, I think that the general world of uh, operators would think of it as a threat. Freight forwarders would see no difference. They don't care. Uh, and governments would be quite happy. You would be quite happy. Uh, but there will be some people who are going to be a loser in this because growth in uh, the industry today occurs by buying additional vehicles. And this concept is built around efficiency, built around making far more effective use of the assets that exist. Uh, so not only will the uh, transport companies be a little concerned about this, and that's where we are working with them to try and see what the impacts are. But uh, the truck companies, the steamship companies, there's a lot of people here that uh, exist because of inefficiency. <laughs> <laughs> The next question is actually related. You talk about efficiency, but it also requires quite a lot of collaboration. Yes. And us as humans, we tend to think of, 
think of things as owning them. Do you think we're going to be able to make that transition into sharing things more? Well, I think old guys like me, probably not. But uh, I think the young uh, people of the world, uh, you guys are young, uh, will because of the sharing economy. There's a lot less desire to own today, or if you own, to more radically utilize what you own than there was or is in my generation, where it's my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. Thank you very much, Professor.